Welcome to John's Jeep Garage. In this video, you're going to learn about vehicle recovery and rescue basics. Thank you for watching. Hi, welcome to John's Jeep Garage. This video is about towing and recovery basics. It's about a vehicle that is in distress, needs help, usually because they're stuck in the mud or uh, need some type of assistance or leverage to pull them out of a sticky situation. Um, I'm part of an off-road recovery group and uh, we volunteer and help uh, multiple vehicles each year. I'd say that in this past year, I've rescued uh, over 100 vehicles. And um, I'm not a professional. We do this for free, but uh, we understand the basics. So this is what this video is about, the basics. Um, if it's not a professional um, video, it's not certified training type, it's, it's more for your information on if you're out in a Jeep club and with friends and you have a winch or you have some tow ropes or kinetic ropes, just the equipment you should bring and how to use it. Thank you for watching. I hope this video helps. So I'm going to go over just all the recovery gear that I bring with me, um, but this will not be what I suggest for basic um, recovery needs. Of course, first I have a winch. Um, there's many winches out there, brand names. We're not gonna go through winch operation. I use a synthetic rope, um, but I also have a tow hook and uh, there are other type of ends that you can put on there as well. Uh, on my Jeep, I absolutely use shackles that are the D-rings on both sides on the front and rear bumper. And let's go through what I bring with me. So I have a recovery bag which has winch remote controls, the Wi-Fi one and the plug-in one. I also carry my gloves in there, usually heavy duty. Uh, leather works as well. I have the metal D-rings as well as soft shackles, kinetic rope shackles. Um, both of these you'll see later in the video how I use them. I also have a snatch block pulley. Uh, I have a couple of them. I bring two tow hitches with me, one with a ball and one with a D-ring shackle. I can use it either on my vehicle or their vehicle. I also have a foldable shovel. Uh, you can get these uh, for camping. I have a tow strap, a short one. They call it a tree saver strap. And then I have the same one, but longer. I use for other purposes, as you'll see in this video. And then kinetic recovery rope. These are very, very useful. Everybody should bring tool bags. I bring two, electrical, and then my favorite tools. I also bring a base for a jack stand. Depending on the area, you need to have some type of foundation. And then if you're in the woods, I usually bring a chainsaw. I don't bring one of these to the beach, of course. And I bring a tire pump because depending on the situation, you need to deflate your tires. If you understand the theory that the lower pressure, you get a larger surface area, especially in the sand, this absolutely helps. Let's learn where you would connect to a recovery vehicle. So I'm going to show you just a few basic ways to connect to a vehicle. Let's say there's a D-ring and it's a Jeep. And let's say you're using your winch. You could just take a, the hook, hook it to the D-ring, and then that's a connection point. If not, by the way, I bring an old screwdriver in my box because sometimes the D-rings are rusted and very hard to remove. So you try to remove it with your finger, but you can't. So I just take something like this, and then I help loosen it up with this and then I can remove it and I remove it because maybe I'm going to connect it to the strap and then I tighten it back in here that way you have a good connection or I remove it because I'm going to use another d-ring and depending on what configuration that may be it's easier for me that way um, sometimes this is when you use a um, there's this thing called a factor 55 that I'll show you this is that uh, factor 55 that I was telling you about I just call it that um, but instead of a tow hook 
there's a pin in the back and what you end up having is this um, and usually it, that's how it would be seen on your uh, fair lead uh, for the winch cover and there'd be a d-ring hanging from it so that's what i mean and um, the d-ring is connected to it and so it goes on the end of your winch instead of a hook and um, you know it connect this way or the d-ring's already on here Th these are where these awesome um, kinetic rope shackles uh, very easy very quick you flip it through you connect it to whatever you're connecting it to and even though i'm using the toe strap here let's just say it was the kinetic rope strap you flip this around the knot you tighten up the knot and then as you can see you got a very good um, way of connecting and this setup right here basically this setup um, the rating on all different type of kinetic rope shackles you can see but it's very surprisingly high and um, very secure and another way for that connection to work depending what somebody has they may just have the hitch so you have to be creative that's why i bring some of these with me so if i if i put this in there secured the pin through then i have this d-ring here instead of here and i can be pulling from the center or if it's the vehicle i'm trying to recover i can actually put that into the vehicle and uh, pull it that way as well using the same principles that we just discussed with the, the uh, d-ring shackle even though this is welded to the frame, these holes normally are for your trailer chains. And usually you have two of them on each side or one on each side supporting the weight just in case the trailer broke free as a safety mechanism. I tend to not ever want to pull from, from this point. I usually try to pull from this point. I will even try to run the D-ring shackle through the hole on a round so I'm pulling from that major point instead of the the weaker side when uh, towing I bring this just in case there's a trailer or something else that's needed for help but if I had to use this normally what I do is I take the ball off throw a d-ring on it and use it to recover that way here's an example of that you also want to be careful when towing because Sometimes people try to connect around an axle thinking they will, but if you look, the brake line runs all along the side of this axle. So if you're pulling something and you're pulling it this way, you're gonna create pressure and break a brake line, something you do not wanna do. It's, it's really important to know your vehicle and know what you're doing. So this would be more under advanced towing, and we're gonna keep the simple basics as using tow hooks, D-rings, um, tow points on vehicles that were meant to be. Be careful of just attaching to a standard bumper because a lot of standard bumpers are just made for impact and not made to be pulled on from the vehicle because their connection to the frame is really very weak and only there for impact protection. When you see that the bumper, especially aftermarket bumpers that are put on are integrated with the frame, and then they have tow hitches integrated with it. Those are normally your stronger bumpers. You can see those on some trucks and um, Jeeps, of course. When you look at the front bumpers, they'll have tow hooks in the front as well. And then um, you always wanna try to secure yourself to one, a point on, that's attached to the frame that is secure. But I'll show you some pictures of where some people have destroyed basic bumpers. This is an example where somebody hooked to the aluminum skin on this bumper versus ever hooking to a frame. Here's an example of a truck. And if you look at the truck, you would not want to attach that bumper, but you can see that the tow hitch receiver is uh, integrated within the frame. So if you look underneath this truck, you would never want to pull on this, uh, bumper itself but if you look at here and if you look at how it's integrated into the frame 
then it's a good secure point to pull from. An example of just a weak bumper that someone thinks they can hook up on, which will rip the aluminum off, versus this that's integrated with the frame, put through the frame, and the frame running along the side of the vehicle like that. Uh, a much stronger tow point, um, but choosing to pull on the bumper, very bad idea. Let's look at this truck. I've recovered many trucks, but at first, all you see is the bumper. Do not connect to that. Let's go underneath and see the best place to connect to this thing. Well, specifically on this truck, a very good tow point. A lot of vehicles have it, but a very simple way to connect and tow. If not, I would have to look further into this vehicle to find where on the frame um, we can attach it to. And if I look right here, this control arm, no cables or wires, I could put the kinetic rope on it. It's strong enough to be able to uh, take the force forward uh, very slowly and uh, would work in a recovery situation. Okay, so please pay attention to this because it's very important. So I, I'm just talking to you about control arms, but there are control arms that can do a lot of damage to the vehicle. And if you don't really understand what you're looking at, then I wouldn't suggest you tie onto it. We're not professionals. We're not doing this for money. We're not a towing service. But I'm just trying to give you some basics. And one of those things are the heavy duty cast iron control arms are really the only ones you should be trying to tie against. Not the McPherson type that look like struts, not the thin cast aluminum ones. Those can break and cause a lot of damage. And even though I told you we're not gonna cover the specialty hooks that go along the frame behind the tires, sometimes they're called torque boxes, or as you can see, these holes in the frame where you can hook into them on either side. Um, as long as you're not hooking onto stabilizer links or struts and avoid the cast aluminum and look for something that is cast iron, thick, robust, and no lines around it, that's really your target. Please be careful and do not do something if you don't really understand what you're doing. And just one more thing about control arms, you are going to wrap a strap around there, you are going to maintain tension on it, and you're not going to use this to jerk somebody out. This is going to be some area that you're doing a slow, maintained pull a very short distance to get them out of the situation they're currently in. Please understand your local laws because a lot of places, if you're trying to charge money or looking for a tip, you may be breaking the law. So that would be a good recovery spot if there wasn't any other option and it was necessary. No cables, wires, anything in the way. The strap, it's soft enough to not be like a chain, which I do not use. If I did have tow hooks, then are ways that you can use tow hooks to help recover into the frame further in. Um, and some people could strap it as far in and let it ride underneath. Um, many options. I try to avoid any very complicated areas that could damage a vehicle. And I always explain it to the individual that I'm trying to help um, what the risks are. The goal is to help the individual not damage their vehicle. That's why I'm against a non-kinetic rope where someone hooks a chain or a strap and they just yank on the vehicle by taking off. The kinetic rope absorbs the energy and then also um, there's a power 
from the stretching of the kinetic rope that is uh, stored energy that helps um, helps in the recovery and we'll show you some videos on that as well but again this would be an example of how I'd tie it in or I could use a kinetic shackle and then connect to the kinetic shackle there as well here's examples of two vehicles I've had to recover by tying the strap around the control arm but there are some cars that have tow rings or tow hooks or screw in tow hooks. Yeah. It's really the. Oh, actually, guess what? What's up? You have a tow hook right here. Let's don't even do that. This right here? Yeah, we're going to connect to that. Oh. We decided to go with the soft shackle. So, just some basics because I'm not teaching you how to use a winch here, but normally what I do is I uh, put it into free spool first and then I pull the winch line out and I walk it to the vehicle that I'm gonna secure it on and then I will put it back into engage. If you, quick trick, if it ever sticks like it doesn't want to, go back, pull the rope just a little bit more and then flip it back into engage. If you have a Wi-Fi remote, then click it, turn it on, make sure everything is fine. Leave your vehicle running. This requires electricity. It drains the battery if the vehicle is not running. And then once we do the hookup on the other end that we've been discussing, clear everybody out of the way. If this line breaks, very, very dangerous. The hook somehow gets disconnected. It's a flying object that could actually kill somebody. So you wanna clear the area. You don't want somebody standing between the vehicles or even near the rope and um, safety's first. That's why I like the remote. I can get far away from it as possible. So if I have the manual remote, which I plug into the winch, I try to stay to the side and be clear as much as possible. But with the wireless remote, it really helps me stand in what I consider a safe zone as I watch everything that's occurring and I can still give instructions to the driver. Here's another quick example. I'm filming as well as using the winch remote uh, staying clear you can see i'm fastened to a tow hook under that truck one of the questions about recovery is the driver of the vehicle and what you're asking them to do and usually there's two things that i will ask them based on the situation keep the vehicle in neutral foot off the brake but most importantly keep the wheels straight if the wheels are turned when you're trying to pull them, then you're gonna create resistance and a bind. Now there may be situations where you're having to pull on an angle, so you'll need to direct the wheels in that area. But depending on the situation, sometimes I have them alternate neutral to drive. I have them put it in drive. It just really depends. Um, I normally try to get them out of the hole they created in neutral before they start driving because if they start driving it creates a a rut that they're just digging this trench so if i can get them elevated out of that hole for even half the distance and then have them hit drive as i'm pulling them that really helps benefit for kinetic rope situations and i'll show you usually we want them to drive when we drive We've already talked about connections and how to connect the vehicles. Let's talk about the kinetic rope. And in most cases, your kinetic rope is gonna stretch 20 to 30%. And once it is stretched, the potential energy that's stored up in the rope, like kinetic energy, it reaches its maximum stretch and the rope transfers that stored energy into pulling the vehicle that you need 
out and free. So basically, you go and let the rope stretch and that other vehicle is going to follow, usually in gear, in drive, unless they're in a hole, in a situation where you need them to be in neutral in the beginning. Okay, let's talk about snatch blocks. You want to use snatch blocks when your vehicle is really stuck or very heavy and you're trying to reduce the load or increase the force of your winch. Let me explain. Let's look at the top of this drawing. If you have a winch directly attached to the load, that's a one-to-one -one ratio where you're just pulling with the force of the winch. Let's look at this uh, example. For this example, I just want to show you the rope coming straight from the winch and hooking directly, actually on a tow hook. That right there is a one-to-one -one ratio. We're using the, the pulling power of that winch, the resistance of that Jeep being in park and emergency brake on, and overcoming the vehicle either being in neutral or in drive to reduce friction and to um, pull it out of the hole or the situation that it's currently in. If you look at the middle of the drawing, we have a snatch block which goes from the vehicle with the winch back to the load vehicle, back to the vehicle with the winch. Let's look at this example. Okay, I'm going to show you something as a mock-up just to help illustrate the point on this video. So here, this Toyota Tundra four-wheel drive is our load. It's the vehicle that we have that is stuck. Here I am with this Jeep, which is obviously lighter. The Jeep has a winch and we are now using the winch and I have the kinetic rope or the soft shackle connected to a tow hook underneath but because of the situation let's see say it's extremely stuck and I can't get it out with just the power of the winch I'm going to use what we call the um, snatch block see the pulley we have the other end attached to the vehicle and the other end pulled to the winch so when we are pulling it when the winch is pulling it the winch is going to be pulling in this direction right for the winch but the resistance to the same vehicle going through the pulley will actually be pulling here and this is why it's a two to one ratio you're doubling the force or reducing the load if you want to look at it that way so on the lower diagram, if we really want to triple the force or reduce the load by three, we need to add another snatch block. Okay. Now, if I decided to put a pulley on this side and run that rope from that pulley to another fixed part on the axle on this truck, I would actually have a fixed point on the truck this pulley, I'd have three ropes, one, two, and the one on the pulley going back to the truck. On that truck, that would make it a three to one ratio, increasing the load on that truck even more, or uh, decreasing the load, but increasing the, um, the pulling power of that winch. You know, using a snatch block or multiple snatch blocks will help increase that pulling power as we just discussed but in situations where you have a very heavy load you may not have enough friction or resistance on the vehicle that has the winch where you may pull yourself towards the vehicle being rescued and in this situation with the truck and trailer which i see very often it may not be best to separate them where some options you can so you got to create some type of additional friction or resistance and that's what we call anchoring where you anchor to another vehicle and add that additional resistance for example your parking brake your foot on the brake keeping it in park that helps but when you anchor to somebody do not use a kinetic rope that stretches you need something that's solid a toe strap or a chain in this case between two connection points helps 
Now, when you're out on the trail or in the woods, you might find a tree that you need to hook to. Use a tree strap. Do not hurt the tree. Make sure that you uh, carry something like that with you all the time. Or tie onto some type of structure to create that resistance. You know, sometimes you can be in the slickest mud, and it doesn't matter if you had three vehicles anchored together. You may need to come up with other options. Not that this is the preferred one, but dual winching at a slightly different angle can create the effect you need to just get somebody a few feet out of the major situation. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope this video gave you some insight on towing and recovery basics. You have to remember, there are certain situations and places you can go on your Jeep club outings, etc., that tow trucks and official professional towing services can't get to. So knowing the basics can help you and help a friend. But the goal here is not to damage somebody's vehicle and to do it safely. Thank you for watching.